He's completely special yeah. and unique. And it's amazing the ups and downs of this. Wasn't it just five minutes ago we were hearing about no one can get a hold of him, no one can meet yeah. him for dinner, and now we're hearing that he could potentially have interest from the gold standard of this entire generation. I think Peter hit the nail on the head with the Patriots at 23. He may not be there. The Bills have two bites at the apple if they don't move, 12 and 22. The Chargers at 17. The, the, the Bengals at 21. Anybody. But what's awesome is now we're almost to the draft. We're a few days away. We think we've heard everything about all these quarterbacks. We've talked about exhaustively. And then here comes Uncle Bruce Arians out of nowhere, out of the <laughs> dressing room. That's Bruce Arians music. Look at what he says about Lamar Jackson. Oh, baby. He sits in there and flips up the field. He's been in a pro style offense. It's more of a scramble. It's designed runs. I don't think I designed runs for him. I just would let him, like Russell Wilson, take what's there and whoosh, take off running. Now, Bruce, of the Peyton Manning, Carson Palmer, those guys. Ben Roethlisberger. The statuesque stand-up corpse. You would think that Uncle Bruce would be sitting and being like, Josh Allen, right. all day. He's saying, this is the kind of guy, Lamar Jackson, that would make me want to come out of retirement, that the Cardinals should get Lamar Jackson. So here we are, 72 hours before he's going to be picked, yeah. and Uncle Bruce, who knows everything about quarterbacks, says, Lamar is the difference maker. Ooh, baby. I don't think he'll be there for the Patriots. You don't think so at 23. Not unless they let's, move. Let's say he is there and he falls yeah. him and they get him at a tremendous value with the teams at the top all taking quarterbacks super early or if they do have to trade up just a little bit to get him and they have the capital to do it and they usually only do that when they want to make moves yeah. I, I guess my question is I'm sorry now I'm, they're talk, talking in my ear and I can't remember Draft what I was week. to say um, <laughs> quarterback wouldn't it be great to, wouldn't it be like so Belichickian of him to take the guy who had the concerns the questions the polarizing guy mm -hmm. yeah. most exciting player though and turn and the opposite of Tom Brady almost yes yeah. and show for his own legacy like I'm going to take this guy and he's going and I'm going to make him the best quarterback in the league after Tom Brady like it just seems to me he's so different than Tom and has a completely different skill set so to make him thrive and to show all these other teams reaching for these other quarterbacks <laughs> he'll eventually come out on top like it just seems like he's a good fit it for does. New England from that maniacal perspective and, and let me put things in perspective uh, from the coaches angle when they try to piece together certain positions, whether it's quarterback, the running back room, wide receivers, they don't keep the same guy. So you look at the wide receiver course, the great ones, there's a tall guy, there's a short guy, there's an yeah. outside guy, an inside guy, there's a small guy, there's a flash guy. Running back's the same thing, the yin and the yang. Quarterback rooms are the same way. You want to get a guy that's just different, just different than the quarterback you already have. And what's more different than Tom Brady, statuesque, sitting in that pocket? He's not going to run anywhere. What do they say? He looks like he's carrying a microwave when he's mm -hmm. running. And then you get Lamar Jackson, the fastest quarterback in the draft, a guy that is as electric as anything we've seen. So that would be great because you have those two dynamics mm -hmm. and you can mold that young man make him even better.